This week on The Happy House, I'm learning how to sew oil cloth. It does look a little intimidating, but it's basically just straight seams and can um, you can do that. And then we're having a hack off. Find out our favorite ways to make things easier. Finally, we'll hear from an expert on how to get kids excited about art. You guys already kind of look excited though. You won't want to miss it. Hi, I'm happy. <laughs> I live in a quiet town outside of Minneapolis with my family. The real happy house is far from quiet. <laughs> I learned early on things are much easier with a little help. I also have a few tricks of my own to share. It's go time, people. Welcome to the happy house. I love to sew and I love to make things for my home and gifts for other people but I've never actually put in a zipper before. I'm a little intimidated by it. I'm with Beth Huntington today, the renegade seamstress, which is an awesome name. I want to be called a renegade. <laughs> and you are going to teach me how to make this adorable makeup pouch. And we're using oil cloth, which is one of my very favorite fabrics. It's not very, I mean, it does look a little intimidating, but it's basically just straight seams and can um, you can do that. And so you start with a 11 by 18 piece of oil cloth. And this, and, um, is, so this is just a polka dot one that I got, just got at the fabric store. But you can actually make your own oil cloth. Are you if, kidding me? No, you can make your own oil cloth. You can make it out of any fabric that you would like. And this is um, some that I had made. And okay. it basically it's just a product that you buy at the fabric store and it's an iron on product. It, you just it iron it on. Feels just like oil cloth. Mm -hmm. And I love this because I love oil cloth, but a lot of the patterns have been around for a really long time. Yeah. And oftentimes I'll see um, an upholstery fabric or just like a heavier weight mm -hmm. fabric that would be really cute in an oil cloth. Mm -hmm. or, so you just iron this on? Yep, you just use a you use a pressing cloth mm -hmm. so that you're not getting it on, you know, on your iron, but it's just an iron on product and it works great and you can use any kind of fabric that you want. And Thick you, fabric. And when you say pressing cloth, do you simply mean a piece of like just cotton fabric yes. or something as a barrier between the iron mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. substance? Yeah, so you don't that get it all over your iron. Yeah, cute. You just changed my world right now. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, let's continue on with our project. Okay, so this one, um, the first thing you're going to do with your 11 by 18 piece of oil cloth is press in an inch on each side, and then you're going to start with your zipper. I heard that sewing with oil cloth is difficult because the needle can puncture the oil cloth, so I've actually never sewn with it either. So I'm curious to see how this mm -hmm. all works out. Yeah. Well, there are a couple tricks to it, and there's some products that you can get, because oil cloth, if you use pins, um, it will put the holes in it, which you don't want. So you can use And these. sort of make it like a perforated edge is what right. I heard, so it will tear really easily. Yes. Okay. So you don't really want to do that. So you use these fun little wonder clips, they're called, and you can buy these at the fabric store too. And um, so I've never I, even oh. seen these before. Yeah. So you take your zipper, and you're going to put it face down on the fold of your fabric. So you've got your fold of your fabric here mm -hmm. and you're going to put your zipper face down right along the edge like that. And it's the, is it is it this edge or the lower edge? Which? Uh, you will put it like, like this, that. yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. then you're going to take your um, okay. clips, yep. your wonder clips, and you can just clip them right on there. So to hold, it, to in hold it in place while you're sewing, yeah, so you don't have to actually use the pins. Okay. And then now you're going to need to change your machine to a zipper foot. Okay. And to actually sew the zipper, but you're going to take your, and just sew a straight line right down next to that side okay. of the zipper, so we can do that. All right, right now. let's get started. Okay. And oh, oh, I wanted to mention too, another trick that you can use is sometimes your zipper foot or your uh, presser foot will stick to the oil cloth. So if you just put a little bit of scotch tape under your presser foot, then it won't stick as much. So I just kind of put That's it under there. That's a great there. tip. And you can um, unzip your zipper too, if you don't want to have that in the way while you're zipping or while you're sewing. And that actually makes it mm -hmm. easier then to mm -hmm. get a nice clip mm -hmm. down because we were we had the zipper in the way yeah. before. So okay, okay. So we'll just go ahead and sew this. Get to your wonder clip. Just unclip it. Zipper's going. This doesn't seem very hard. Okay. And we've got it halfway in. That's awesome. 
the next part, what you're going to do is flip it around so that the right sides are on the inside. Okay. And then you'll do the same thing. You'll, well, if you unzip your zipper. And then you're going to place the edge of their zipper right along the edge of the fold. Okay. And then when you sew it, you're going to sew it again, you know, right down the edge. The tricky part is when you get to the bottom because um, it'll be a little bit tight, tight in okay. your machine. So just go really slowly and, okay. and it'll work out just fine. So you just do the same thing. Okay. So now what you will do is you'll fold it about, oh, I don't know, so it's about maybe two inches down. So basically, this is sort of a third of the way down. Right, a third of the way. To do. Yeah, and you, you can kind of guess on that. The pouch isn't going to have the zipper at the top. It's going to have it somewhere in yeah. the middle. Okay, yeah, right in the middle. And then we're just going to be um, putting a seam just right down each side. Easy enough? Yeah, easy. It's just straight seam. So okay, we'll do let's that. do it. Do you want to do it? Yes. Okay, so we'll do our use our wonder clips. I need to get myself some wonder clips. Yes. I think everyone needs wonder clips yes. in their life. Okay, I'm going to... Try this. So you want to go in about three quarters of an inch or okay. so. Does that look an good? Inch? Mm -hmm. And probably then do the same thing to the other side. Other side, yep. All right. All right. So we've sewn the seams now. Show me how to do the corners. Okay. The first thing you want to do is take some pinking shears, and these are the kind that have just little ridges on yep. them instead of a straight. And just, shears. yeah, and you know, you probably do it with a regular, but it's fun. It's mm -hmm. just... It makes a nice edge. Yeah, it makes a really nice edge on there. So we're trimming the seam a little bit Just here. trimming the seam so it's a little bit smaller. Okay. So basically what you're doing is you're going to take the corner of the pouch yep. and kind of poof it, po po poke it out and then fold it down like to make a triangle to make a little triangle yeah it's almost like a hospital corner when you're making a bed yes mm -hmm. just like that and then you're just going to sew a straight seam across just a line right there mm -hmm. just a line right there okay so we'll do that all right and you just sort of measured like didn't it's not an exact science is that no, right no you could do it about 2 inches in maybe okay. it really isn't an exact science all right and then the other side. you would do the other side. So we've put our zipper in, we've sewn the side seams, we've made the flat edge on the mm -hmm. corner, and now it's time for the big reveal. Yes. Okay, let's see it. This is going to be a really cute. I love the black and white with the green. It's really cute. Thank you for teaching me how to sew with oil cloth and how to put in a zipper and all of these great tricks you've shared with me about making my own oil cloth and wonder clips. That's, that was fun. Thank it's you for having me. It's always fun with you, Beth. Oh, thanks. thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. Everyone's looking for ways to make their lives easier. After these messages, find out my favorite hacks. Anytime I can find a way to make something I do all the time easier, I love it. That is what a hack is. And I am here with my friend Peggy. We're going to have a hack off, actually, because I bet you I know more hacks than you. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready for my first hack? Yeah. Who's going first? All right. This is a good one. Okay. I'm okay. ready. So I like to have baked potatoes sometimes with dinner, but then when I get home after work, it's late and it just is too much prep time. It's production. So, hack. If you cover baked potatoes with some oil and sprinkle them with salt, then wrap them in tin foil, put them in your crock pot all day on low, they are ready to eat when you get home. No fuss, no muss. Way to go. Okay. I like it. All right. I'm writing that one down. What do you have for me? But this might be better. Do you have anything better than that? We'll see. I don't know. Okay. You have kids? I do. Have How kids. many kids do you have? I have four. Four, four kids. All mm -hmm. right. So, any of them play sports? They do. All right. So, anybody ever fall down or get injured? Injuries happen all the time. All right. Okay. 
Take this. All right. Cut it in half. Okay. Yeah. Easy, right? Yes. Put one in here. Half, just half, yeah. Yeah, actually we're gonna wet it down first. Okay. Stick it in here. You put it in your freezer and you have tiny little Boo boo owie things for your injuries. How cute is that? You just have a sleeve of them, you go to the game, pull out. Okay, that was good. Okay, all right. Speaking of kids, do you have kids? I do. Do they ever like to take cold lunch? All the time. Do you love packing cold lunch? Not so much. Okay, so I've got something for you. Mm -hmm. So there before you the week begins, I have my kids help me prep their lunches for the week, or at least the parts that can be done ahead of time. So we have one container for the cupboard, mm -hmm. and then we have one for the fridge, and then typically just the sandwich has to be made. But these are all bagged up ahead of time. That's because, how, I mean, we open the cupboard five days a week and pull out the baggies and... And they have the big box, mm -hmm. and they don't wanna get the Ziplocs out. So then the kiddos can actually pack their own lunches. I like that, I okay. like that. Pretty. I think it's pretty good stuff. Thumbs up. All right. That one. All right. All right. What else you got All right, for me? Ready? All right. Mm -hmm. Push those aside. Okay. Make way for new hats. Do you have any shower doors at home? I do. do glass kids, the yeah, they, they get yes. kind of grummy mm -hmm. and ugh, there's soap scum on there. Yes. Dry your sheets. Dry your yeah. sheets? Yeah. They just have enough of a, you know, surface on there. It gets the, the grime off the soap. It's a thing. It's for real. That is kind of yeah, great. It's easy. Mm -hmm. That is easy. I might, I'm going to have to use that one. Okay, I've got another hack for you. Bring it. Yeah. Do you have socks at your house? Tons. Do you have any single socks at your house? Come on, <laughs> who doesn't? Socks are the bane of my existence. The bane, because they have to be matched yeah. and there's always stragglers. Yes. There's always stragglers. So, I gave each of my kids a mesh bag. Mm. They put their dirty socks in there within their laundry. I zip it up, wash it all, and then empty it into their sock bin. And I know for a fact all the pairs are there. And they get this back, mm -hmm. and they're matched up. And they're like, matched. They're, oh, they there's a pair for they do it. I don't fold. You don't need to fold socks. They just pick I'm out not which socks. Now. I mean, right? So no Great. mismatched socks at my house. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Way okay. To go. All right. All right. One last one okay. that doesn't involve a cleaning product. So when I am cooking for like a big dinner party or something, I pretty much use every square inch of my countertop. I also do that. All right. So if you have, let's say you're cooking from a magazine or a cookbook that's maybe not a giant hardcover one. <gasps> Pants hanger, right? Where does it go? Right there. Just so then you that. still have that your space is covered up. genius. Your countertop, yeah. All right. You have taught me some new things. And you have taught me some as well. Thanks, Hap. I feel like my life's going to be easier now. Can I have a baked potato? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. This was fun. Come back again. I will. All right. Hack off. After these messages, expert tips on teaching kids about art. I'm always looking for ways to broaden my children's horizons, and art is something I think that they just can't get enough of because it makes you ask questions and it also makes you appreciate things that other people have done. Luckily, we have a really great Institute of Arts here in Minneapolis and we are here today, Ella and Chandler and I, with Amanda Lesnikowski. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for coming here. <laughs> so Amanda, what are we standing in front of right now? We are in one of our Africa galleries and so we're in front of a plank mask. So if you can imagine, someone would actually have to wear it and it's almost as tall, if not taller, than you guys are. So it wouldn't be something easy, but it was really important to the culture that it came from. So when you walk up to a work of art, try to ignore the label. And we love answers, and we love knowing why and where things come from. But the best way to start a conversation with kids is just to ask them, what do you see? Well, it looks like a piece of art, but it's apparently a mask. And how would one wear it? That was my question. <laughs> Why don't you walk, take, go around the platform once and take a look at it from all sides. You too, Ella. Take a look. Uh, oh. There's a head-shaped thing. That's what I thought was going to be behind it, but I wasn't sure. It's like... Oh, okay. Oh.
Ella, what is that? Um, a tiger. Chandler, what do you think it is? Panther. A panther? Speaking of which, I have a joke. Okay. What did the pink panther say when he stepped on an ant? I don't know. Dead ant. Dead ant. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. a good one. <laughs> okay, so Amanda, tell me a little bit about what you do here at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. I'm the School and Teacher Programs Coordinator. So I help the Minneapolis Institute of Art bring K-6 and high school and even university students here to the museum to learn all about our collection. But we also do a lot of work to bring parents and volunteers out of the museum and into the classroom. And so one of the programs that we run is called the Art Adventure. And parents come to the museum mm -hmm. and they spend two and a half hours here and they learn all about a particular set of artworks. And then they get to go into classrooms like yours and they get to learn all about it. So if I came to your training program, how would you help me get kids excited? At Mia, we try to inspire wonder through the power of art. And to get that sense of awe and that sense of excitement and wonder, the best thing to do is to not let the kids see it at first. Mm -hmm. And so our program sends reproductions into the school. And we always suggest that the parent sits down at their level. So whether it's a sixth grader or a kindergartner, you find a way to make yourself equal with the child. Mm -hmm. Because if they feel like you're on their level and you're sitting down with them, it's a conversation and not just a lecture. That's and a really valid point. It is. Yes. And if you want them to get engaged and feel like they have a sense of ownership, it's nice to just have a natural conversation. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing to do is to not show them. Not and show them the piece of art yet? Not yet. Okay. And you tell them that you're going to show them a work of art, but you're not going to tell them what it is. And you can do that in museum galleries as well. You can walk up to something and say, okay, I'm going to stand in front of the label. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is? And you turn the picture around, you turn the reproduction around, and you have them be quiet, which is really hard for kids. <laughs> but we always say 30 silent seconds, okay. just to closely look and to think and to keep all of their thoughts to themselves. And take it all in. Give yourself space it. to take it in. Exactly. So get down to their level. And then wait before you show them, tell them you're going to sort of let them gather themselves. Exactly. And then make them be silent for 30 seconds while they really take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I love. These three tips are great because all these can be done in a home. Let's say you don't have a, a program in your school or a great mm -hmm. museum you can go to. You can get books from the library or your local bookstore. And I could do the exact same thing, especially with like a coffee table book. You yes. can open it up and say, okay, I would just want you to look at this. So it's very accessible. It is. And most institutions, art museums, science museums, have really wonderful online resources. So if you can't get somewhere or if you want to visit a museum in a different state, you can go to their website and look through these digital images of their collection and do the exact same thing. Do you think you guys can be quiet for 30 seconds? Use this time to take a few steps back and maybe walk to the other side and come back over to my side. Maybe get a little bit closer. What else do you teach the parents? Open-ended questions. So it's really easy to ask yes or no questions, and we're comfortable with them. Do you like this? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. But the conversation stops when they give you their answer. Right. And so the best way to keep it going is to be asking those open-ended questions and to then take what the kids said to you and say it back to them. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you see here? And maybe they say a cat or a dog. You know, kids aren't always going to know, and their answer may not always be right, but that's their answer. And so you say to them, well, what do you see that makes you say that? In different children, you know, if you have more than one with you, they're going to have different opinions and they'll feed off of one another. Right. Well, I see that it has whiskers, so it must be a cat. Well, maybe a different child doesn't think that they're whiskers. And so you say, okay, I hear what you're saying. What else do you see? I see like a fluff ball and two girls. 
What makes you say that they're girls? Um, because that one has like a bow and that one has like a dress on. Okay. And that looks like kind of like a turkey maybe? Or some, some bunny. Or maybe like a platter thing. Okay. okay. Uh, like a platter. A platter? Hmm. The main thing I'm taking from everything you've shared with me is if you make this a conversation with kids, you're going to spark their interest. It's a lot different. So all of those things that you've just told me are about creating conversation and um, not being talked at, but being talked with. And I think yes. that is sort of the gist of it. It's the same for adults. We yes. all just want a conversation, yes. not a lecture. That's, been, that's very helpful. Should we move on to something else? Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Amanda, for being with us today. Thank you. We're going to do a little exploring on our own. Is that okay? Of course. All right. Let's go have fun. Go down the elevator. Oh, after we go down the elevator. After you go down the elevator. <laughs>